Okay, so the next one I'd really like to play around with is this idea of more of the taxidermy look. Not that I, I'm somebody who likes taxidermy and taking dead animals and stuffing them. That's not what I'm saying. But that Victorian feel of a little vignette under glass that has to do with a bird. So what I thought I would do is I have this little parrot that I fussy cut out and I'll probably have to ink up a little bit or, or trim because I see a little bit of white around the edges and I thought he would look very cool with this um, mechanics card in the background and we could layer some I have these leaves that I had from when I used to make little I used to make little terrariums under glass. How surprising, right? And I bought these like paper leaves, which you can still get at the craft store. And I thought it might be really neat to sort of like layer him instead of under just paper, actually layer him up on sort of a collage of paper leaves that mimic his colors. I thought that was really kind of cool. And then I thought it would be nice to put him in one of these, like, one of these, like, little under glass pieces. So I could look at my template and see if I have a template that would fit. So let's see here. This template here, which was this cutout, would fit, but it's a little... It's a little bit mm, narrow, just a little bit narrow. And so then the rest of the ones I have are definitely going to be narrow. So that means I need a, a dome that has is as big almost as this card, which is almost exactly the same as this vellum too, which is kind of nice. So if I have the vellum here, I could fit a dome. Okay, so let me show you how I make a template, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this template because it's much bigger. So it's a really simple process, one that even I can handle. I just take something that's, that's round, and I draw a circle, like that. Make sure that all parts of the circle are on the cardboard, right? And I'm letting it slip, so let me try that again. Let me use a Sharpie so that you can see better. I'm going to just make a circle, go all the way around, like that. Then I'm going to find the center of the circle, see what, what the, its diameter is. What's its widest part? And its widest part seems to be right here at 2 and two and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of course, it couldn't be easy. Let's say two and six inch, two inches. One, two, three. So we'll say one. We're going to find the center. That's what I'm doing. I'm dividing two and three tenths. So that would be one right there should be the center. All right. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to draw right down the center like that. And it doesn't matter if it's slightly up like this because you're just getting the dome shape really. And then all I'm going to do is look for like that edge part, put my pen there, and line it up, draw down, and again, go to the end, because you're, you're lining it up with wherever you make that line. Like that. And then you would cut that out. straight lines first like that and then you just cut out the curved part 
And that just becomes your temple template for the different size cloches. And you're always making your base by hand. So it's really just this. And then you can then you have like a variety of templates that you can use. I'll have a free template download for you at the end of this video, so keep watching. Now let's get on to the template for this particular size. And I'm old. This will work just fine. And I need a circle that's going to be, you know, the dome on that. So I'll need to mark this here. And I think the first thing I need to do is cut this down so that I can get the right circle. And if you think that I am going to actually try to measure out the perfect half circle using some kind of instrument, you are sadly mistaken because that is not going to go well. Not in my world. So <clears throat> I'm going to need to do something very highly scientific here. First I have to cut this, which I don't know if I can cut on this. It might be too thick. probably be fine enough. I can just finish it with the scissors. What I'm going to do is need to find something that's a circle, a mug or anything that is round, and then use that to trace it. I mean, that's how scientific I am. So let's try that cloche that I talked about. That will be too small. How about my own mug? Again, too small. I think I'm going to need like Let's see, I have a, a plant here. It's a little dirty, but let's see if it matches. So that is pretty close if you can see. It, you, can, you can see that the edge goes to the edge. That's kind of what we're looking for, but it's not quite, and that is gonna make a mess. But I do need something this size. Let's see what else I can find. Okay, I have this wood plaque again guess where I got it. Okay, I'm going to have to shift to voice over for a little bit because this um, video, I have to edit it down. It was just a little bit crazy. So you saw me trace the circle on top, and I hope it made sense saying that I don't need the sidelines because the cardboard's already cut. But I still want to make sure that dome is centered on the cardboard because if the the top of the dome is a little off, it's going to show. So I'm just trying to sort of do the same kinds of measurements I did on the smaller template, just to kind of make sure that when I put that wooden plaque down and trace it, I really do have it in the center. So that's what you're seeing me do right now. I'm not doing anything different than the smaller templates that I showed earlier in the video. It just looks a little bit different because the sides are already pre-cut. And I hope I haven't confused everybody out there. I am excellent at making something that's easy, just a little bit more complicated. But it's not going to matter too, too much if you use the templates I provide for you. I will have those templates um, linked below in the uh, show notes, which is, you know, in the little box. You just push the little arrow down and get all the information about this video. And there will be a link in my Buy Me Coffee uh, link that will have all the templates that I have made so far in my own projects. And hopefully those will fit a variety of your sides. So as you saw, I just made sure it was center and then I re, uh, you know, just took a pen and made sure that I made the I traced it and made sure it was exactly right. And now this template is done. Phew! So now I have my template, and hopefully this is going to fit on my vellum, and it does. So what I want to do is turn it around here, and I'll have to get that gold pen. Maybe pull it down just to here. And I'm really just doing the top on this one. I don't have to cut, but that means I'm going to have to put gold on the sides. I'm going to cut this out like this. And I'm going to have to add a little bit of gold to that top, I think. And I think I probably can color a little bit e more even if I just pull this and kind of color right up against it. Right? 
kind of use it like a tracing edge. And here I am just using my ruler to provide an edge so that I make it straight. And I'm just beefing up that gold edge around the uh, dome. I don't know if you can hear the wind. It's so windy here. Spring is coming, but boy, is it windy. Okay. So let's give this a, let's give this a little try here. Let's see if this fits. It will fit. Perfect. And I like that setup card is up there. Okay, so we can put this aside, let it dry, and start working on this guy here. So I am going to go in with, hmm, I think I'm going to go in with my black soot distress ink and just edge him so that the white parts where I fussy cut don't stand out as much. And the outline of him does. Almost look a little bit like a shadow. Okay. Now the dome is going to be here, so I want his head down here. So I want to put these little guys down first. So I'm going to use Fabri Tac on them because this is going to be very, very um, three dimensional. And these guys are, they are paper technically, but they feel a little bit like cloth, you know? They're like that heavy rag. Ooh. And I can even, there's some wire in there too, so I can even make it a little bit more 3D. And... I think I want some leaves under him and some leaves over him. That makes sense. So we'll put another leaf under him. And these are just machinist shop cards that I got at a, a local like uh, antique shop, but it also sells some ephemera. It is kind of hard without knowing exactly where he's going to be. But I think that's good. And then I think we need to stick him on. And he almost needs to be on. I'm wondering if I'm not I'm not one for these 3D pop dot dots too much, but in this case it might really work. Because if I slightly elevate him if I put a pop dot here okay so if I put him like let's actually stick a the edge of a leaf right there And he kind of sits above it. And then I can kind of push that up like that. And let's see. Yeah, I like the, the light leaf up there. I'm sure people have been doing similar things to this. I, I didn't really go on to check to see. I probably should have. Maybe I would have gotten some tips, but I just wanted to wing it. Um, it seemed kind of intuitive. The hardest part is working with the vellum. I think you could definitely use a clear plastic if you wanted to really see these details well. You know, you could use maybe even the hard packaging that you get with um, 
some like embellishments if it was the right size then it kind of could puff out which would be a really neat idea i mean i think that the idea itself lends itself to a lot of different uses so now look at it, it's it's quite 3d and you can see that it looks like it's puffing out so i'm really considering using um double stick tape on this because I think it's going to need that extra reinforcement. So I know I have some. I'm going to put it right down here, almost coming off the card a little bit. Like that. And then I have a one of those little needle things that hopefully I can tease off the corner. Like that. Let's line, line up the top first because we want to make sure that's in order. All right, that side is on. So then I wanna make sure this side is on, just like that. I get it. Now it is stuck to the glass, and I know that, as I'm gonna lift up, I know this is gonna catch. I am aware. I think I'm going to put this on coffee stained paper anyway for some extra stability. So what I'll do is I'll just put some glue stick down. No, nope, that's not my juicy one. I'll stick this down. And then the other part of that double stick tape will catch, hopefully, on that. All right. So we kind of have this pocket, right? See, we kind of have this pocket that's not sealed yet. Okay, when I say I had to re-edit this video, I had to re-edit it every way except for sideways. Okay, maybe sideways too. I decide I'm not happy with this pocket, so I'm going to pull the vellum off, and I'm going to do it the right way for you. I could have cut that whole part out and just pretended to start from the beginning and have it perfect, but I think it's important if you're making something really 3D, then what you need to do is put the vellum down a certain way. And I thought that was important to show you. So that's why I'm redoing it. So here we go. So what I'm gonna end up doing is putting the double-sided tape down on one side. And, oops, I turned on the light because we were losing light. And I'm gonna just start the same process we did last time, except this time my intention is to go from one side to the other. So we'll, we'll put the vellum, line it up, and then put that vellum on one side. And then what I'll do is take some glue stick, and I'm going to go in and press down generously with, I have a baby wipe because I'm just thinking, it. my fingers were getting a little sticky, and I didn't want to discolor the vellum. So I'm just taking a baby wipe to push down, just so that I can make sure, it's not really that wet, just so that I can make sure I'm not using my fingertips. And see, I went from one side over the top to the other side, and that is so much better. So I guess the lesson learned is if you're really putting something puffy inside, you need to glue one side, then glue the top, and then glue the other side. All right, so let's... Trim this guy now. And you can see it's that juicy stick is just slightly bubbling up. It'll be fine. I just have to keep pressing it down and working with it as, as we go. In fact, let's work out those bubbles right here.
All right, so I'm thinking maybe a standard kind of a base with maybe some decorative legs is what I'm thinking. So if I trim this piece here, In the end, I'm going to absolutely love this project, but you're going to see the inside of how my brain works and how much I fly by the seat of my pants. I really just take it one step at a time. I don't know if I like the curve. Let me just trim this into a strip. See how that looks. Oh, I kind of like that. With the base like that. All right, that might work. So I need to curve the edges here. Okay. Oh, I should have done it this way because I need to glue it. So let me trim these ends. You're like, what? Well, you'll see because I want to fold it up and over, right? All right, so then the base would be here, like that. I feel like it's a little long. Like, I really like this, but then this one's too long. So I think what I need to do is mimic that same arc on this side. So how am I going to do that? Um, well... This is where I want to cut. So if I move this here and cut on the same edge, right? It should be the same angle if I thought that out. Right, that looks good. All right, so I'm going to actually glue that on. And I think it needs a little bit of it, like some kind of a very, like a little fancy trim right there. Like something with washi tape, something gold. So I found this washi tape. Definitely going to need some. It's not the stickiest. So definitely going to need a little art glitter glue here. And now I think I need a little bit of gold on the base and I'm going to use some gilding wax. So if you didn't know, you can add a little bit of water to your gilding wax if it starts getting dry. This gilding wax is probably five years old and it tends to get dry now because it's towards the bottom. So there's a lot more air inside of it and it's been used a lot and loved a lot but it still has a whole lot of life left to it. I'm gonna put some more gold there. And I think I just want more texture on the bottom of this. Like, I think I might want to spray some, like, some of my distressed inks just to sort of blend this all in. I don't know, is that weird? It just seems like this is a lot in the middle. Um, what would I put as a as a center here? I don't even know that I really want. Well, I guess it does make sense to have a center piece. I don't think I would do fasteners on this because this feels more like a, a bird cage kind of thing, right? Um, maybe I'll add some gold in here. I 
think I want to spray this. So I just sprayed and added some distress ink and then my heat gun just because I wanted to make it look more cohesive and I think it does. I think it blends pretty well. Cut off this washi tape. So let, if we slip this in now, I think that looks pretty cool. This would even maybe look really cool on the front of a journal. I don't know. There's just, I just feel like this is just a jumping off part. You ever start something and you have an idea and you have to kind of play around with the idea, but you know that this is just the beginning, that there's got to be something else you can do with this, something that you're not thinking of right now, but that it's going to lead to something else. That's kind of how I feel like this, what this is going to be. So, so I think what I need to do is decide if I'm putting on some kind of a label, which I just did think I liked, right? I think I liked it, the idea of putting on a label. Um, and of course, metal always does look kind of nice. So I guess the whole thing is one of the reasons why I love my punch set is for this exact reason what you're going to see right now is i'm going to glue stick on this label and maybe i'll put a little bit of gold on there just so that it doesn't look so one-dimensional right it doesn't look just so much like a die cut I'll put that down, and then if I take my little punch, right, let's see if I can make where I want the holes. Maybe I want them right on the edge. Maybe I want a bigger brad, like right here. Then what I can do is just take my punch set, that I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely adore. Get the right size. I think that would be a good size. I'm going to put it right on that hole. I'm going to need to do it a few times. I actually didn't probably need to do it a few times. That cut really nice. And see, because I didn't seal it up, but I put this in there, I cut through. And now I can just get regular brads. Do we want a brass? Do we want, oh, I think I want that more. I don't want it to be so shiny. Okay. Oh, I don't think I got matching ones. I did not. Now, if I had been smart when I, well, not if I had been smart, I didn't know I was going to do this with this bird. But if you were fussy cutting this out of a book, you could fussy cut the bird's name and age it up to look like a specimen so that you could put the name right in the center there. That looks good. And then I might even sew this across just so it really holds. I really like that. Oh, I really like that. It's really like, you know, quite a a, a thing. It, it would really be a, a standout piece in a journal or something like that. I think I might need to put something on the back here so that this doesn't look so white. Do I still have this piece here? That's not gonna work, it's not big enough. I mean, this is tea dyed in the back, so that's fine. It's just this piece here that would need to be covered. 
which, you know, I mean, I guess I could cover the whole thing in the back. We'll decide at the end, I guess. All right, so let me put some glue on and then I will, I think I'm going to, I think I'm gonna sew it. And see how this is inside so you don't have to worry about like it sticking out. I'm gonna put some glue stick on the back side make it a little bit more sturdy and then again it's just about making this guy center right like that and I'm going to put a little stitching right up here to really make it secure just did a straight stitch, nothing fancy, but it's coming across and that kind of really holds it in. I could do a zigzag there. I wonder what that would do. Okay, so it's the zigzag stitch up top there is cute. All right, we're getting close here. So when I put in the stitching, it really made this air between the parakeet or the parrot, and it really does feel more and look more like you can tell there's, you know, but you do have to be careful of the pocket, right? It might pucker, so you have to really make sure that it's kind of held. So I think I wanna put something right here on the outside to sort of make it 3D. And what I'm thinking is I have some like leaves and some flowers. So let's see what I have here. I mean, I could go really crazy, but I don't want to take away from, it is tropical. See what the colors I have. I could add something big, but then I could definitely never put it in a journal, right? That would limit how I use it. Like I have these flowers, which are cute, but I don't think it kind of goes with this. Plus it makes it very heavy. I have these sort of that's kind of cool, this kind of um, succulent, paper succulent, which I, I think I got in the cheapy section. Oh, that's kind of cute, right? Isn't that kind of cute? I could put this on a shelf. Oh, I kind of like that. Yes, that's gonna make it kind of bulky, but wouldn't that look like really cute on a bulletin board or on the back of a shelf? Um, where you have maybe some tchotchkes. I don't know, I just really like that. So I think I'm gonna stick with that. It's a little bit more than what I usually do, but hey, I don't usually put parrots underneath glass either. So let's see if I can get my FabriTech working. something in the center there that's kind of gonna hold that down. So what can I put there? Now I can take my punch set again. It's many, many layers of paper, so it might take a little bit of doing, but I have faith in this punch set. There we go. And then if I put this down on this, make a mark. This is really not where I thought this was gonna be going today, but that's kind of the fun part, right? You never know where these projects are gonna be going. 
Now, if I could put a really funky brad in the middle of there, but I think I'm just for now going to put something very um, basic. See, I don't like how that competes. So something in here needs to be uh, more flowery. I got these at an estate sale. I would never have spent a lot of money on brads, but this might be the occasion to dig these out. Or I could use always a button too. Or I could mount a button onto this. Let's see how this looks. All right, that competes less. Because it's the same color. And I might even throw on like a little bit of cheesecloth or something there so that it's not so... See, this is what I love about the punch set and brads because you could... can really add whatever you want, wherever you want. Just that little bit of cheesecloth kind of pulls in some it feels a little bit more natural, right? Just like that. And then I could put some kind of label here. Let's make sure these edges look good. A little something there maybe a little name of some kind I wish I knew what his name was I would need to go into a tropical thing but I could even write parrot so this is a scientific name for a subgroup of parrots so if I cut that out of that. And I'm going to put that right in there. I think I want it a little bit darker though. That is one big <laughs> specimen card, but I think it's kind of cool. And I really kind of like how you can see him and he's got all this air and, you know, we could put a little bit of gold right there. Do I dare? Yeah, it is just to kind of make a little bit of a, like a, a reflection right there. Dome. 
and that's it. It's it's kind of cool. And so what did we make? We made two, one that took a lot longer <laughs> than the other. But you can see where you could get carried away because they're so fun. So we've made two paper cloches together, one with a kit and one without. Both were super fun to make and definitely challenged me. And I hope you'll give it a try too. Do you want a video number three? I still would love to make a more traditional terrarium and I'd love to play around with also um, some faux jars. What do you think? Put it in the comments below. Do you want to see more of this kind of project? Thanks for joining me and I hope you had fun. Check out the template. The link will be in the box below. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Till the next time, I hope you'll try something new and stay crafty, friends. Bye!